Ahoy there. Um, tonight, I would like to mention a book that I just put out. It's called Simply, A Course in Miracles. It's available on Amazon. And uh, it's a <clears throat> an attempt to put A Course in Miracles into simple layperson terms um, to get a little bit of a better handle on on the course before you really dive into dive deep into it. Um, do you need a book like this? Uh, maybe, maybe not. You don't really need it, but it could be useful. And this is like a primer. Uh, many people have used different primers for the course. One of the most well known is uh, The Disappearance of the Universe by Gary Renard. That's one that um, many people have read and that has given them deeper insight and put in simpler terms uh, what the Course is saying. And this book is is like that, but it's different too. It's um, it's, its own thing. So, uh, and it has some nice pictures. <laughs> um, you couldn't really see them there, but uh, it's got some pictures. Um, anyway, Simply A Course in Miracles. It's on Amazon. Allow Alani. Just wanted to mention that book. All right, so... Um, to, today we will be doing chapter three, the innocent perception, and this is section three, perception versus excuse me, perception versus knowledge. We have been em, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, we have been emphasizing perception, and have said very little about knowledge as yet. This is because perception must be straightened out before you can know anything. To know is to be certain. Uncertainty means that you do not know. Knowledge is power because it is certain, and certainty is strength. Perception is temporary. As an attribute of the belief in space and time, it is subject to either fear or love. Misperceptions produce fear, and true perceptions foster love, but neither brings certainty because all perception varies. That is why it is not knowledge. True perception is the basis for knowledge, but knowing is the affirmation of truth and beyond all perceptions. All your difficulties stem from the fact, fact that you do not recognize yourself, your brother, or God. To recognize means to, quote, know again, unquote, implying that you knew before. You can see in many ways because perception involves interpretation, and this means that it is not whole or consistent. The miracle being a way of perceiving is not knowledge. It is the right answer to a question, but you do not question when you know. Questioning illusions is the first step in undoing them. The miracle or the right answer corrects them. Since perceptions change, their dependence on time is obvious. How you perceive at any given time determines what you do, and actions must occur in time. Knowledge is timeless because certainty is not questionable. You know when you have ceased to ask questions. The questioning mind perceives itself in time and therefore looks for future answers. The closed mind believes the future and the present will be the same. This establishes a seemingly stable state that is usually an attempt to counteract an underlying fear that the future will be worse than the present. This fear inhibits the tendency to question at all. True vision is the natural perception of spiritual sight, but it is still a correction rather than a fact. Spiritual sight is symbolic and therefore not a device for knowing. It is, however, a means of right perception, which brings it into the proper domain of the miracle. A, quote, vision of God, unquote, would be a miracle rather than a revelation. The fact that perception is involved at all removes the experience from the realm of knowledge. That is why visions, however holy, do not last. The Bible tells you to know yourself or to be certain. Certainty is always of God. When you love someone, you have perceived him as he is, 
and this makes it possible for you to know him. Until you first perceive him as him as he is, you cannot know him. While you ask questions about him, you are clearly implying that you do not know God. Certainty does not require action. When you say you are acting on the basis of knowledge, you are really confusing knowledge with perception. Knowledge provides the strength for creative thinking, but not for right doing. Perception, miracles, and doing are closely related. Knowledge is the result of revelation and, and induces only thought. Even in its most spiritualized form, perception involves the body. Knowledge comes from the altar within and is timeless because it is certain. To perceive the truth is not the same as to know it. Right perception is necessary before God can communicate directly to his altars, which he established in his sons. There he can communicate his certainty and his knowledge will bring peace without question. God is not a stranger to his sons and his sons are not strangers to each other. Knowledge preceded both perception and time and will ultimately replace them. That is the real meaning of quote, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, unquote, and, quote, before Abraham was, I am. Perception can and must be sta stabilized, but knowledge is stable. Fear God and keep his commandments, um, this is a quote, quote, fear God and keep his commandments, unquote, becomes, quote, know God and accept his certainty, unquote. If you attack, attack error in another, you will hurt yourself. You cannot know your brother when you attack him. Attack is always made upon a stranger. You are making him a stranger by misperceiving him, and so you cannot know him. It is because you have made him a stranger that you are afraid of him. Perceive him correctly so that you can know him. There are no strangers in God's creation. To create as he created you can create only what to create as he created you can create only what you know and therefore accept as yours. God knows his children with perfect certainty. He created them by knowing them. He recognizes them per perfectly. When they do not recognize each other, they do not recognize him. So Jesus is, um, once again, making a distinction. Um, this whole chapter is called The Innocent Perception. And Jesus is now finally really distinguishing between knowledge and perception. So it's an important distinction to be made. Knowledge is, is gnosis. And gnosis would be uh, essentially oneness with God. Uh, whatever that means, you know, who knows exactly what that means. But in that knowing, there's, no, there's, there's complete certainty. There are no questions. Perception, on the other hand, we live in, in a world of perception. And Jesus is saying, the, the miracle brings right perception. We see our brother, you know, we see the other right, the way, the way that, um, in a right-minded way, meaning that we, we see the other as ourself. We love the other as ourself. We love our brother as ourself. And um, in doing that, we, we bring ourselves closer to revelation, which is knowledge. You know, we, we bring ourselves closer to uh, the goal, which is knowledge. But um, even right perception, will, you know, is not, the, is not the end, you know. Simply, um, and, and Jesus also talks here about making, making that perception of the other more and more stable, meaning we can stabilize that perception. We can, we can live most of the time in that, in that perception if we 
if we practice, you know, if we do, do, do the practice of the Course or some other spiritual practice that, that helps with that. But um, Jesus is also making a, a very important point here, which is that we cannot know God. You know, he says here at the end, let's read this once again at the end of this section. There are no strangers in God's creation. To create as he created, you can create only what you know and therefore accept as yours. God knows his children with perfect certainty. He created them by knowing them. He recognizes them perfectly. When they do not recognize each other, they do not recognize him. In other words, um, you, can't, you can't get to God uh, without loving your, your fellow <laughs> as you, you know, loving thy neighbor as thyself. You, you can't, you can't expect to understand God if you, if, if you, if there's a wall of separation between you and others, any others, you know, the Course is saying, yeah, it's, it's easy to love some people, um, but it's the people that are the hardest to love are the, which are, are the ones that we really, you know, that that's really what we would want to look at. Um, and there's that great quote I will mention, which is it's the people that are the hardest to love that need it the most. <laughs> um, so Essentially, you know, the miracle is, and this is mentioned in, in the miracle principles at the beginning, the 50 miracle principles, miracle it involves right perception. And right perception means seeing the perfection of, of the other, of your brother. Seeing your brother as whole, as you would like to be seen as whole and perfect, without judgment, without any judgment. Um, and that is not knowledge because that still involves perception and perception is, you know, is, is, uh, subject to change. Anything subject to change is not, you know, knowledge, which is not subject to change. Knowledge would be eternal truth. And, um, perception is still in the world of change. Um, another point to be made here is that, that Jesus says, um, a vision of God would be a miracle rather than a revelation. The fact that perception is involved at all removes the experience from the realm of knowledge. That is why visions, however holy, do not last. This is a very important point. Um, I'll tell a little joke <laughs> which it, very quickly um, a student goes to, to her let's say her Zen master and says oh great master um, my meditation I, I'm having the hardest time meditating it, it's just my mind is all over the place I'm not getting anything it, no you know I'm I I really would like to have a, you know, a more fruitful meditation experience. Can you help me? And the Zen master says, do not worry, my child, it will pass. Six months later, the student comes back and is like, oh, you are so right. My meditations now are like, so rich, so full of color. I'm getting these really amazing visions. I'm, I'm, you know, having just the greatest time. And Zen Master says, Don't worry, my child. It will pass. This too shall pass. <laughs> um, the point being that um, anything with a beginning and an end is still in the world of perception. Any vision that you might have 
um, however wonderful it is. And a lot of people think that they've seen God in person, <laughs> in living color, uh, or they've talked to God or whatever. Um, now, there may be some, for sure, truth, validity, uh, usefulness to that. But for the course, you ha you haven't really gotten there yet. Um, that, you know, whatever vision or whatever thing it was, it served a purpose to bring you closer to the final goal. But that wasn't it. That was a... Um, a milestone along the way on, on the path, so to speak, or a stepping stone, however you want to look at it. So um, I think that's good for tonight. Knowledge and perception. Um, some people talk about the A Course in Miracles as being a Gnostic scripture in the sense of it aiming at gnosis, know thyself, knowing thyself thy true self, which means to know God, which also means to know the other as yourself. And uh, without knowing the other as yourself, um, you might not get, you know, you're, you're, you're still not quite there. That's what this seems to be saying. So thank you for tuning in. I hope it was helpful. I'd I would love to hear your comments. And I'll see you on the flip side. So long for now. <laughs>